Hey everybody, the Bonga is back. Welcome to part 65 of Let's Play Xenogears. Yeah. Alright, in the last episode, there was a fair amount of talking, but that's been like that for almost the entirety of Disc 2. So hopefully Faye will have a better grasp of who he is. Oh, that's a cool looking gear. Is this the Zeno Gears the uh, we they were talking about? Dead. Dead. Are you okay? Dead. I'm sorry. This is all my fault. Faye? You return to your own self. You've become one. Yes. Thanks to you all. If all of you hadn't called out to me... Ugh. Dead! Don't worry. This is good. This is, after all, I... Dad? You and... You and I must become one. Huh? Groff? What's going on? Ha ha ha! I reached the limit of the body I possessed on that day three years ago. I required a body that would tide me over until your true awakening. That is why I acquired the body of your father. Regardless of your awakening, your merging, and the inherited memories you had acquired, there was no way for you to know of this, since you had lost your memory at that point. At the point in which I merged with your father. Impossible! What about Wiseman? What about Father? Of course they were just parts of me. I couldn't hold on to Khan totally. His ego was far stronger than I imagined. When my control weakened, he showed himself to you as Wiseman. Ugh. You have awakened. This body is now useless to me. Now I must return to my original body. The reincarnation of my body that you inhabit. Stop it! Dead! I hear you, Faye. You see, he and I are one. I am Khan. Khan is me. He has become one with me. So you two shall open your hearts and unite with me. Then we can go on to eliminate everything! No, I can't allow you to control me. Huh. Protecting your master? Then so be it. I'll merge with both you and your machine then. Now come, Faye. Fight me! It's no use. I know you're Lacan, and that you're a part of me. That doesn't change you being my father. I can never really fight you. You're so naive. Why don't you understand that your naivety is what killed Sophia? What killed your mother, Karen? I already know that. That's why I swore never to run away again. That I must rescue Ellie. So don't get in my way. Wake up! Open your eyes, father. Lacan. If that's the case... Then fight me. Fight me! I can't. I see. Then there's no choice. Since you are so unwilling to fight, I believe I'll have to use them as bait. Stop it! Don't we have the same memories? Can't you also remember that sadness you felt way back then? Why then? Why must you destroy everything? If we stop Deus, won't this all be over? You still don't understand. Even after your contact with the existence? I came to understand after my contact with the existence that even if Deus was destroyed, as long as humans still inhabit this land, Miang, Elaim, will be born time and again. Then all living things may as well perish along with Deus itself. That's the only path to freedom. The path to release us from the eternal cycles of life, the tragedies of history, and the spell of fate. 
Once I awaken Deus as a weapon, I'll obliterate all living things. Then I'll use your awakened self and that machine to return everything to nor nothing. That's what I concluded. Yang and Alheim are not just Deus' mouthpieces. That woman is its main body! Why can't you see that? That's not true! She gave her life for me by shielding me from harm. Her eyes weren't Miang's. Mother came back at the last moment. Miang, Mother, even Ali. We're all humans born on this planet. Deus doesn't matter. You'll see. I will bring Ali back. Father. No. Graf, Lakan. If you won't back down. Never! Then I have no choice. The time has come to truly become one. Alright, it's finally boss time. Against True Welltall. Alright, let's see what I got for Ether Machine. I still have my attacks. Although I do have Big Bang. I can fix my frame, but I don't have System It anymore, obviously. Alright, let's go into booster mode to do damage more often. I do have a lot of HP, which is pretty nice. Alright, let's dance. That is a cool looking move, though, it's just doing the Liu Kang bicycle kicks on the ground. Can't go wrong with that look. Yeah, True Veltal is also pretty fast. And luckily I'm in no need to heal yet. So really, because it's a one-on-one -on -one fight, it's just a matter of trading shots. That's what it comes down to. Should I use Yin Power anyway for speeding it up? I guess I could do that. Oh wow, look at my fuel max, 7,000? That's a pretty damn good gear. <laughs> Excuse me? Okay, it only adds an extra thousand. Oof. That hurt. And I won! Gah! Gah! Why don't you finish me off? If you don't get rid of me, then you cannot get what you want. It's alright, Dad. I understand. You are not Groff. You are my father. You and Groff are one. Your will and purpose never change. I knew that once we fought. But let's stop now. Our objectives should be the same. It is the same as our becoming one. We don't have to fight. Er, what? My body? Zohar is after you. The last piece to combine with Deus' system. It seeks to unify with you. The first to have been divided from it. What? This is what Lakham wanted all along. After all, I'm an imperfect existence. It was inevitable that it would come to this. Considering what had happened in the past. Lacan's imperfect secondary contact with the wave existence split his personality into two. Eventually his body died, but the original Lacan transmigrated, bringing the destiny of becoming a contact with him. He was re 
reborn as your present body. The remaining persona, just as desires, lived on separately by possessing the bodies of others. That is Gruff. That is me. I may have inherited Lacan's will, but I'm not the same as the contact, Lacan. It is impossible for me to make real contact. There would be no true melding and release. Even though our bodies may be different, I am still half of you. That fact remains. Although I'm imperfect, I can merge temporarily with Zohar, thus maybe I'll buy you some time. This is the only way I can be one with you. This is all I can do. Today's the system I'll start to look for you again. Before then, you have to destroy the newly perfected Deus and this Zohar modifier. You're the only one that can destroy the physical barrier that encases God's body. Dad! As you said, that was Karen. Through many generations, Miang is beginning to break free from her bounds. Now that LM is merged with Deus, she has all of her memories back. All the memories from her original birth as the contacts complement up to her current transmigration. That includes all of the lives she has, she has lived as Niang, and her substitutes over the centuries. And of course, that includes your mother's memories too. Mother's memories? Faye, cut away all the binds on mankind. You should be able to do that now. Save her and all the other women bound with her. I'm begging you, Faye. What's this? This pendant? Is this Sophia's? Or my mother's? It's nothing. I'm just talking to myself. I'm sorry. For all the trouble I've caused everyone. Thank you all so much. Anyway, let's get going. There's little time left now. For me. And for our planet. Alright, so at least we know what our main threat is, and that's Deus. What is this place? This is where it all started. This is our genesis. We... no. Humans were born here. Long ago, Deus crash-landed on this planet in an interplanetary colony ship. In order to revive itself someday, Deus detached the Zohar modifier's core. After this core unit became, came down here, a single woman awoke, awoke and arose from out of it. She's the mother of all humanity. After she awoke, she used all her power to bear several beings. These will become ancestors of the whole of humanity. These were the Emperor and the Gazelle Ministry. Finally, she gave birth to replicas of herself to be humanity's caretakers. Two selves, the human mother and the weapon, the subject and the complement. That is Elian Miang. I, the sole survivor from the colony ship, met Elian. Everything started from there. The land of Genesis, Kadamani. This is that place. Yeah, but Faye, even with your shared fate with Deus, why do you have such ancient memories? Usually, human memories cannot be passed down through the generations. Humans do not normally have the ability to compress and store memories in their introns. But Ellie and I, and Miang, are different. Due to our connection with the wave existence, that is, due to Zohar's ability to change possible phenomena, we can clearly store data in our introns. In other words, we can leave behind memories to be inherited by our descendants. Just as the wave existence is bound inside a Zohar, the information is affixed to me, so to speak, 
by some of the power of the wave existence. Then this is... This is the form from when Ellie and Miang were still one being. This is the first woman of our world. Our mother. Looks mummified in there. So if we destroy that Zohar thing, everything will be over, right? Yes. The source of our ether powers, and the source of power for the generators to make our gears work. It all comes from the Zohar modifier engine, which can control any potential phenomena. If we destroy it, Deus and the Seraph Angels will all be deactivated. And then we should also be able to free Ellie, who has become bound to the Deus weapon system as Mie. Right, Faye? Yeah, that's what the wave existence said. But then there is the downside. It will also mean that we'll no longer be able to use our gears or our ether powers anymore. What are those Seraph Angels all about anyway? That odd appearance as if they lack something. As if they were neither living beings nor mere weapons. Zohar senses the human consciousness and incarnates the Seraphs. Human Consciousness? Zohar itself involves the principle of uncertainty. The observer's perception of Zohar determines the entity it actually becomes. In other words, I believe that those angels then are incarnations of the spirits of people. The people have been absorbed by this to become parts of it. So what merit is there for them to gain in eliminating all of civilization? Is it some kind of hatred for those humans who have survived? Of course not. Those people who were created and assimilated as parts for Deus would not have such intentions. Try to remember what Ellie, when she became Miang, said. The creations of God will someday be a hindrance. That is why they must be eliminated. Yes. That is why Merkava is being used to begin the destruction. But Deus is not following its programming of exterminating all of civilization. The Seraphs, which are terminal interface weapons of Deus, are using their bodies composed of nanomachines to absorb massive numbers of people, regardless of whether they are dead or alive. It is not discriminated between the mutant and non-mutant people. This is highly peculiar. The fact that the people who are meant to be destroyed are being taken in as well. That is the absolute opposite of what it's supposed to be doing. Maybe there aren't enough parts? That is unlikely. Aside from those bodies that were destined to be parts for it, Deus, who has already acquired the abilities of the nanomachines, can just about use any material to construct its body. It is obvious it has other intentions in mind. Those intentions... Apparently it is called Deus the Mother. If God is the Mother, then those motives are coming from the Great Mother. Impeding the growth of its child, enveloping it, to bring the child back to the womb to become one with it. That is its motive. Such a program does not exist within its design though. It was probably given this unique will by someone, either from Ellie who has merged with the Deus or... Either way, it doesn't change the fact that we have to fight. Regardless of what their intentions are, the problem is how we're supposed to deal with them. You think we can do it in our current state? This secret battleship, Excalibur, will also take part in the final battle. Additionally, the military potential of all the surface forces will assemble here. Even if we can put together a massive force, we still have the problem with the main armament of the Merkava. We need to know how to take that out. As long as we don't do that... Merkava's ultra-long-range cannon has the ability to vaporize any substance. On top of that, they have a barrier around their perimeter that nullifies all attacks. 
We fought against the Merkava many times to try to stop its onslaught. However, we cannot even get close. Hence, we have had to withdraw every time. Damn it! No matter how much we want to save Ellie, if we can't get inside the Merkava, it's meaningless. To add to that, there is a problem with those Seraphs. They function as the terminal interface's weapons for close defense. I can easily say that their attack power is equivalent to the Omnigear class. They even have the regenerative ability due to the nano machines. Don't be concerned about that. I was able to obtain some data from Xenogears. You see, Xenogears is mutagenically involved due to its contact with Zohar. Using that data, all of your new gears ought to be completed soon. Additionally, all the other weapons and armaments are being modified to implement the disassembler device. Disassembler device? In contrast to the nano assemblers, which create matter to repair with, the disassemblers have the ability to dismantle or destroy matter. They can even deactivate the nano machine's restoring ability by disengaging their repair programs. This should be sufficiently effective even against the Deus of Seraphs. Alright. Even if we can deal with the angels, just how are we gonna deal with that Merkava? We can't even get close to the thing. There's no such thing as a perfect defense. There is a way. Look over here. <laughs> Merkava's main gun requires a 1.2 second interval to reload because of its tremendous output. Upon firing, although it is only sectional, there will be a portion of the barrier that will be opened. There is a 1.87 second delay before the barrier reforms in the area. If we can use this window of time to target and destroy that cannon, it would be possible to close in on it. If we can get close enough, we can break through with gravitational spatial correction. Well, this is the rough idea. Unfortunately, we don't have such a long-range cannon. I could acquire a target in such a brief time frame. So what you're saying is, we need to shut that annoying cannon up, right? Such a small window of time, how do we do that? You want to go head on, into Merkava? Now you're being reckless again! That's suicide! No, listen! We're not going to just rush in! The address seal 4 in this Excalibur are also equipped with barriers! That's what we'll use. Not only for a short time, we can withstand a direct hit from Merkava's main cannon. Then we can close in and watch for that part of the barrier to go down, and then destroy the cannon. How long will our, will our barrier last? About 20 or so seconds. That's all? It wouldn't matter how fast we fly. In that amount of time, it will be without a barrier before we can get within firing range. And those numbers are valid only if the generator is at full drive, right? You can only get those numbers if you sacrifice all other output and propulsion. I'm not suggesting we go in with guns blazing knowing we're gonna lose. We're gonna physically put a lid on it. Directly. As you said, the Adrestal 4 Excalibur's Barrier can't sufficiently defend against Merkava's attack. At least with one generator, that is. Meaning... Meaning, we can defend against the Merkava with twice the amount of time. 40 seconds, if we couple the two generators together. This way, we can make it into the harder Merkava. Then, what about the propulsion? Just hear me out. This is what we do. First, we transform my Eidrasil into Heavy Assault Mode, and load it onto the Excalibur so we can couple the generators. 
By doing that, we can reduce the energy usage down to just supporting the hull of the ship and generating the barrier. This will allow most of the energy to be devoted to generating the barrier. Next, shift the barrier to full front and focus it to a single point where their main cannon will make it strike. Now for movement. First off, we develop a barrier by engaging Excalibur's generator to maximum power. For propulsion during that time, we'll install on the Adrasil those large solid rockets we got from the ruins of the mass driver. When Excalibur's barrier expires, we'll use the Adrasil force generator to develop a barrier. Then we'll also detach the solid rockets and shift the Excalibur into conventional flight. Using this method, we can get right in Merkava's face. After it fires, it'll be defenseless. During this time, we'll block the muzzle of Merkava's cannon with Excalibur's bow ram, upon which we should have 0.67 seconds. With the cannon fire of the Excalibur, we'll destroy the Adrasil Force Slave Generator and incapacitate the Merkava along the way. And then we break through! They're going to be looking at it, oh, we didn't follow anything you said. <laughs> That's what the plan is all about. The combination of the barriers of both ships, storing the Merkava, the timing of the cannon fire of the Excalibur, these are all going to be crucial. Mess up any one of those, and the consequences are going to be severe. Hence, it'll be necessary to have both crews in sync with each other. That's why I like to play Sig in command of the Excalibur. I have no qualms with that. What do you think, Queen? Will you lend us your battleship? Since there appears to be no other alternative, let us go with that. Please use it as you see fit. Are we not cutting it comfortably close? When you calculate the arrival time and the barrier generation time, you will see what I mean. One minor mishap will put us in a situation where we can run out of barrier power before our arrival. Also, we'll be devoting both generators to keeping the barriers up. Won't that leave us without perimeter defenses? We won't stand a chance if we get engaged by the Seraph Angels on our way to Merkava. We'll hold them off. You can count on us. You guys just concentrate on taking out that main cannon. Thanks. We're depending on you. Already, everywhere else has been taken out. This is the only place that's left. This is going to be the true final battle. We set out to silence God's Ark, Merkava, which was the epitome of offensive and defensive power, and then storm inside it. We initiated the operation to destroy Zohar.
And we didn't get to act any of that out. Hopefully it didn't land on any towns or anything, that would've sucked. That can't be! A secondary explosion? Oh no! I should've known better. What a miscalculation! The explosion was too big! It reacted with the main condenser right under the main cannon! And induced a secondary explosion! How could I have been so stupid? You mean, we overdid it? Why did I not realize it sooner? This means, we might have... Oh no, Ellie! Oh. Oh my gosh, Ellie! What is it this time? Hey, C-10! What more is going to happen? Something is happening in the center of Merkava. What could it be? It just pretty much destroyed all of wildlife around it. So it's just all dais now? At that time, the earth quaked and shook. And from the location where the Merkava crashed, a giant object appeared. It was dais' final form. The Merkava was merely its vessel. Dais evolved through the use of Krillian's nanomachines into a planetary scale weapon and began terraforming. He was attempting to convert this entire planet into a weapon. He retreated back to the base at the, new, at the Snow Plains to form a new strategy. We decided to go back in the dais. Time was running out for us. Alright, so it looks like it's in Shabbat. Yeah, I recognize this room and music from anywhere. Well, in any case, let's save. So, let's stop the video here, and then the next part, we got to think of our plan. Alright, from the looks of things, well, we are at a decent level. But I could stand to be at a better position before we go to the final area. See you there, everyone. Thank you so much for watching.